<laughs> okay, so I, I wrote this at like 3 o'clock in the morning, so bear with me here. And uh, you guys are my guinea pigs for, for, for this. Hopefully we'll be doing a lot more of these. Um, so first off, thanks everybody for braving this weather to come out here. It's freaking cold outside. Um, joining us here tonight for Art for Everyone. Um, I'd like to welcome you to your community bang. Um, I'm going to read this off of this because I did not memorize it. So uh, we changed it from the Big Bang because just like you know the universe created by our Big Bang, uh, we're constantly expanding, we're constantly evolving to meet the needs of our community. And, and that's what we're about at Community Bang. Uh, helping each other in our community to expand our knowledge and evolve as people. To teach and to learn, to experience, and in many cases to find out what our passions are. Um, a lot of people go through life and they never figure out what their passion is really. Right? So this helps us, you know, you can't do it. Uh, um, experience a bunch of diverse uh, um, subjects, and that gives you a chance to figure out what you like and what you don't like, and that sort of thing. Um, so all the resources you need to be successful, right, whatever that word means to you, if it means money or if it means happiness or whatever the case may be, all, all those resources are available to you here in your community, right? So um, <clears throat> what's Community Bang about? Well, it's about us, it's about community, and it's about you. Uh, now this is the first of what we hope to be many, many workshops. Uh, these workshops are going to cover a vast array of subjects. There will be individual workshops like this one, and then we'll also have uh, workshops in series as well. Um, so, uh, uh, oh, and each of these workshops is going to be recorded and available on YouTube channel for anyone, anywhere who wants to learn. Uh, and on that note, if you are interested in giving a workshop, <laughs> maybe you want to teach some Taekwondo, I, I do. <laughs> I have one set up. Oh, do you? Like two weeks. Two weeks from now. Oh, I, I, I didn't see that. Well, that's fantastic. I'll be there. Uh, and then eventually I'll get out to the school. <laughs> Once it warms up outside, because of Jesus. Um, so, uh, um, <clears throat> let's see. So, if you're interested in giving a workshop, we'd love to hear from you. There are some criteria. Uh, workshop hosts have to have attended at least three other workshops. And we do have to approve the outline of your workshop in order to ensure it matches the community planning agenda. Uh, during the workshop, there's no selling. We feel that distracts from the actual learning and creates kind of a wall between you and your neighbor, right? Uh, we're here to build lasting relationships, not to sell you stuff. So uh, we also ask that you invite your friends, family, and network uh, to subscribe to our channel by sending them a link to your video if you're a host, uh, or a video that you liked if you're not a host. Sharing is what networking is all about, so uh, you know, let's, uh, let's just share the heck out of this stuff, right? Um, now BANG itself, uh, BANG stands for Barter and Networking Group. So uh, a barter, uh, we all know what that is, right? You know, some of you might not be aware though that there's actually a couple of ways to barter. The first one, the one everybody knows, is traditional barter. It's pretty simple, right? Uh, let's say, uh, let's say you made some cookies. We got cookies here, right? Uh, let's say you made some cookies, and I like cookies, so I want one of your cookies. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a banana. I happen to have bananas. I got a lot of bananas, so I decide here I'll take a cookie and I'll give you a banana. So there you go. You got your banana. I got my cookie. Yay, cookie, right? Um, but why would we want to do that? Why do we want to trade? Why don't I just go out and buy a cookie? Right? Well, maybe I can't afford a cookie. Maybe I spend all my money on bananas, right? Because they're such a good deal. Or maybe I'm saving cash for something else that I can't barter for. And if I barter, I don't have to use that cash. I can go and paint a local grocer's fence and get groceries. Right? Or I can style someone's hair a few times and uh, they make me a fine chest. It's a time-proven concept. And cash itself is really just a value map tracking mechanism for a barter. The difference is cash actually has a cost. It goes through many, many hands, and each of those hands wants a piece of your dollar, right? So with barter, it's value for value. It's straight up, right? I have a skill, you have a skill, we trade our skills, right? No bankers in between, nobody to take a little piece of our, 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 our money, which is awesome. But what happens if I want your cookie and you don't want my banana? Now what, right? I don't get a cookie, and that's really sad, right? So I, I want a cookie. So how do I get around being sad without using cash? Well, we're going to do something in this community as it grows called credit notes, uh, which is a simple script system, right? Where I give you a credit note for a banana, you give me a cookie, and then you can take that credit note and you can go trade it to somebody else for something they have because maybe they want a banana, right? And that's how it works. Again, taking all those extra steps out of it, all the bankers, all the tax, all that other crap, right? And uh, <laughs> you know, you're just you're just trading one value for value, right? Um, I mean, I mean, that's really the problem with cash. It just costs too much. If I wanted to go to the store and I wanted to buy a cookie, 
Uh, literally, I would, it would cost me two bananas, the price of two bananas to buy myself a cookie. But I can go and trade a banana to somebody for a cookie that they made, right? Without having to deal with all the markups. So um, I give you credit note for the banana, I get a cookie, everyone's happy, except maybe the banks. Now, the most important part of this whole thing is networking. Okay? We want you to get to know each other. Make friends, enjoy yourself, right? Invite your friends, family, network to join us at these workshops. We're hoping to have an array of workshops that eventually will have something for everyone. But first and foremost, we want to make this fun. Uh, all of our workshops are free to attend for anyone. A lot of networking events pitch themselves as being exclusive, and, and that's just not what we want. We're not exclusive. We are inclusive. Right? And so, um, let's support your local economy, and uh, welcome to Community Bank. So let me introduce our host. Um, Okay, I'm going to have to read this because I didn't actually get a chance to read this. Lisa Gower is a certified and experienced teacher. She holds an undergraduate honors degree in fine arts and master level education degree. Her teaching experiences range from pre-kindergarten to university level and professional development for practicing teachers. Lisa's passion is combining her love for art and learning to create authentic self-discovery experiences for folks of all ages and backgrounds. She has offered versions of her unique program for several decades doesn't look like she's been doing it for several decades. Uh, and has watched participants make dramatic personal shifts. She welcomes you tonight to dive in and have uh, have fun. So without uh, you know any further ado or bad analogies and jokes, mm -hmm. I give you Lisa Gower. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming out yet again. Cold, cold night. <laughs> <Give it up. laughs> They're real hard to floor here. Um, so I'm going to try and make the presentation part brief so that you can actually get down and dirty and, and do some work. Um, so if you've been to the last one or two meetups that we've had, I know at least one person has, maybe two. Um, last time we had a, a sit down class, we were talking about the elements of art. And maybe you can't see this, but I'll just briefly go through it. So um, because my classes are really basement level, entry level, Anyone can come, if you've never touched a paintbrush or picked up a pencil to draw, this class is for you, right? So we're going to talk about really, really basic things to kind of get your head around and into the art, art kind of space. So we talked about the elements of art the first time, and then we went to the gallery and we looked at some group of seven paintings specifically, and then some other artwork that um, we could look at and talk about the elements of art. So the elements of art are things that you can talk about, about the works. They're kind of like the skeleton or the backbone of the work. So um, line, what kind of line? Wavy, straight, fuzzy, hard. Texture, we all know what texture is. When you put on clothes, they all have different textures. Shape, so circles, squares, um, organic <coughs> Space, space is um, the picture. The picture plane is flat, right? So space is the perceived depth of that picture plane. Okay. And then value and color. Color is red, blue, yellow, pink, whatever, right? And value is um, anything from very light to very dark. So, and shades of gray in between. So, as an example, you have the color wheel here. Okay. You might notice, if you've never seen a color wheel, and you want to do some art, this is really handy. So they've got all the colors, the main colors on the color wheel here. And the second row down here is the true color. Okay, the true blue violet, the true red violet, the true red. This part up here is a, a value lighter. So it would be like you added some white to that. And then the other two rows are darker values. This is still all blue violet. This is still all red. But this is a really, really dark red. Okay, So it's really saturated or has a darker value. And then this would be lighter. And if you added more white or you put it on brighter paper or just used one brush stroke, How do you it make would it be darker. Um, there are lots of ways to make it darker. What you usually, okay, technically, technically the easiest way to make it darker would be to add 
the color opposite on the color wheel to it. And that brings it to a neutral, which is gray, black, brown. That's a neutral. It will bring it to something like that. And that's how you would make it darker. So you add a little bit of, in this case, for red, it would be green. Green is opposite on the color wheel. Wow. <laughs> I can hand this around so you can all take a look at it. Um, but that would bring it down and uh, make it darker. <coughs> there are lots of ways to make things darker and lighter, and it really... How come I didn't learn this in school? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so that's another conversation. That's a whole other conversation, and this is really, really basic right now. So those were the elements of the art that we talked about. We're going to pull one of those out tonight, which is space. And we're going to try to create space using two things, which also happen to be elements of art. We're going to use value and color to create space. There are other ways to create space, but this is kind of the easiest one to start with. Okay, so, and again, space is the illusion of three dimensions on a two-dimensional surface. Okay, so um, last time we talked about space, uh, some other things we talked about space were the, the positive and negative space. So positive space is usually the object of the, let's say, painting. And the negative space is usually everything else, the background, right? So here's a really good example of space, positive and negative space. It's obvious what the positive space is. It's the eagle and all the stuff in it. And the negative space is the white all around it. Right? That's really easy to see. Yes? OK. And I'll hand these around later. So the negative space would be like even the white inside the eagle? Yes. Okay. Yes. Anywhere where there's not red or black in this instance, is negative space. So if you start looking at that negative space, you see that it has its own kind of rhythms and shapes and all that going on if you start to look at it. And I wouldn't worry about it right as we're talking about, but you will see when you do this exercise, you will find that happening. Okay? Um, this one also has negative space, which is the kind of buff color, the beige color. That's really pretty. Okay, I'm going to hold this right here for now and come back to it for a second, in a second. Um, okay, so if we want to create space with color and value, things that we have to think about color initially are warm colors and cool colors. Who knows anything about warm color and cool color? Yeah. What do you know? Well, all I know is about warm colors would be like autumn colors. Mm -hmm. Like, for example? Um, like orange. oranges Yellow. and browns mm -hmm. and... Um, green. Green? green. I think it's Sometimes. Different, Sometimes. The Sometimes. different shades, right? Like the real true colors would be like the cool colors. Is that right, yeah. And yeah. then the warm colors, like I'm thinking just autumn colors. Like yeah. Yellows, oranges, browns. Yeah, yeah. So yellow, orange, red are generally the core um, warm colors. Think of the sun or autumn. And then the um, basic cool colors are green, blue, violet, or purple. Yeah. Um, now, we can get into a whole discussion about how there are warm, cool colors and cool, warm colors, but we're not going to do that today. We're just going to keep it really, really, I think. I'm not sure. yeah, we're going to keep it really, really simple. If you want to, you can see that on, on the color wheel. There are warm, cool colors, right? Yeah. Okay, so the thing about warm and cool colors is that they can have different properties. The basics are that warm colors seem to come towards you as the viewer of a painting, and cool colors tend to recede. So, if you take a look at this, you may find that the red and the yellow kind of seem to come forward, mm -hmm. and the blue and the green tend to feel like they're backward, back into the distance back. Interesting. Does that make sense? Now, there are all kinds of different 
um, exceptions and different ways that things can be put together that kind of turn that on its head, but that's our, that's our baseline for now, okay? Because we're just learning. Okay? So another example of that, a little bit more realistic. Oh, wow. This is a group of seven that we looked at last time, I think. What do you mean seven? What does that mean? It's a group of painters. Was a group of painters. And then we call group of seven. So the blue is in the background, right? It looks further back. It's a cool color. And then I don't know if you can see over here, but we've got red in the front. And these are outlined in red, so they look like they're coming forward. And then kind of the green in the background, like in the back background. Back here? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just kind of yellow greens. Now the other thing that we're going to talk about, okay, that's color in a nutshell. <coughs> Value is light to dark. Dark things tend to push things forward because we can see them clearly. Light kind of makes us look like we're looking way, way, way in the distance. So that this person has done that as well. So things up front are darker values and this mountain is like, in terms of a mountain, it's close, right? Relatively close, so it's still dark. But you can see here that they've got a lighter blue behind this mountain, which is meant to be further back. And then the sky, again, is further, further away, so it's really, really light here. Okay? I'll show you another example that might be more clear. I love this painting. Um, what do you notice first about this painting? I noticed the dog first. The dog. Well, I saw the dog first. Yeah. Why? I was looking at the contrast between it's the boy and the, and the dog. Right, yeah, mm -hmm. contrast. It's the darker. It's dark, it right? Jumps out. Yeah. It's dark, and boy, is it in your face, mm -hmm. right? Um, the size of it, but also the very blackness of it. It's very, very dark. And the contrast is very contrasting. Right? It's a very light body. And even though this boy, I'm going to say, is kind of in front, placed in front of the dog, mm -hmm. the dog really overpowers this painting because it's so strong, so dark. And then the negative space here is those neutrals. And the only, the only purpose for this negative space really is just so that they're not floating on a white. Oh, it looks kind paper. of disproportionate to me. Mm -hmm. It looks just like doesn't look the scale doesn't look right. Like the feet look a lot too small for the size of the child's head. Like it, everything looks disproportionate. That could be my small feet, you know. <laughs> that could be. <laughs> <coughs> I don't know what you mean because it seems that they instead have bigger feet. It, it looks like old cartoons. It looks like the old Christmas cartoons. Something where they were isn't quite proportioned. Well, his body is a lot longer than his legs, which yeah, is yeah. not usual. But sometimes people But that's have a shorter. body type, right? Yeah. It could be yeah. real, but that's what struck me first. Okay. But it was Okay. So you see you see the importance of the darkness, the lightness, and the background, right? Okay. So, uh, what else do I want to tell you before we go on? Um, okay, I'm going to show you, I'm going to pass these around. These are actual photos. So again, the light, the, sorry, the warm colors are coming forward. Warm being yellow, orange, red. They're coming forward. And the blue is going backwards. It's in the background. Um, these warm colors also happen to be dark warm colors, saturated warm colors. So it's very red, it's very yellow. And that also gives you the idea that they're coming forward out of the picture plane almost. And um, it's a light, this is the lighter blue contrasted with this really heavily saturated yellow. The blue is less saturated, it's less blue. Okay, so I'll hand that around so you can kind of take a look at that. And this is the same, it's not the exact same picture, but it's the same idea. So it's red and yellow are in the front, mm. and the blue is 
a cooler in the back, cooler and warm in the front. Yes. And then when the warm gets darker, it also moves more forward. Yeah, it kind of punches it forward as well. Instead of going back, it comes mm -hmm. more forward. Mm -hmm. Again, lots of exceptions to this, yeah. but we're not going to talk about that today. <laughs> and take a look at what's on the back of this as well. It's very important that you do that. So I'm going to give you a minute just to look at these very quickly. Can I write on that? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, thank you. Do you have red green? Um, yeah, yeah. I have a kind of a different sort of color. It's um when you get into darker greens and darker <laughs> yeah. like purples, yeah. blues, uh, they all just blend together. They're all the same thing. Um, okay. When the colors are a little bit lighter, they're better. Um, it's like um, it's like looking at uh, water paintings. It's, it's all washed out. Yeah, okay. Right? So, so if you get anything too close together, it just blends together. Oh, okay. okay. So my my uh, I was previously married, <laughs> and my husband had a red green um, color de um, defect. So when we lived in the south, there were holly bushes, very green, very um, saturated deep green. And there were also cardinals, and they loved to sit in the holly bushes. But he could not see the cardinals because of his red-green defect. That because the value of those was what he was seeing. The value of them were the same. He couldn't see the red cardinals in the green bush. Cool, eh? So that is their protection. That is the bird's protection. Mm -hmm. Nature has protected it. Mm -hmm. Plus, holly has very spiny uh, leaves. They're very prickly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah different, but definitely colors. Different animals see different spectrums. Yeah. So, yeah. It, although it might be blend for us, it could be like just this big bright light for you know some predator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Only a few humans can also see ultraviolet too. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. That's right, bugs eat. <laughs> And there's people that can see a million shades. <laughs> the RGB spectrum has 16 million colors. Okay. What does that mean? Um, red, green, blue, if you look at um, computer programmers will use a value from 0 to 255 of red, green, or blue to mix different colors mm -hmm. to program it so it looks like the right color on the internet. Hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why it, uh, uh -huh. the programmer is helpful for that, or consultant is helpful. <laughs> to do that because they only have one color at work. <laughs> <laughs> what shade, though? <coughs> That's a hex value. <laughs> so hopefully you all looked at this tiny little picture, mm -hmm. because that is basically what you're going to be doing. Oh, no, I didn't, I didn't see that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so if you can see it from where you are, the warm colors are coming forward, mm -hmm. and the cool colors are going backwards. And this is a completely non-objective work. 
which means it's not abstract. Abstract is like what's on the wall. That's abstract. It's not a real bear. It's not a real owl. It's not a real tire. It's a an impression. Somebody's impression or interpretation of it. Okay. So that's abstract or abstracted. Um, Non-objective means basically nothing is recognizable, and you just put on those shapes and colors, whatever you whatever is in your hand. Basically. So here are your options for papers. Um, the big drawing paper, this size. There are some other things in here, like I don't know what this is. Um, random things. There is tracing paper, which you might use for something. There is drawing paper, this size. There is calligraphy paper, that size. There is really heavy something or other paper. It's really heavy. It's like heavy watercolor. It's got a ridgy side and it's got a flat side. It takes a lot of paint. This is cardstock. Um, and then there are just random papers to do whatever with. Can I just touch so, the calligraphy paper? What is that like? Um, I just wanted to touch it. I've never. Pass around if you like. So you are welcome to come and explore the papers. Choose something. Don't do anything smaller than any of these. Okay? So this is about the smallest you can get. And I want you to fill the page. Fill the page. And I will come around and help you. I don't know how to use anything but pencil crayons. So. <laughs> well, here's your turn. You know, check it out. To expand. Yeah. There is no wrong. Okay? There is no wrong. Excuse me.